Hello guys, welcome to Animation Power Tips Season 2. Now, this has taken longer than expected. It's taken a few months for me to actually get started with this season, but we are here and I couldn't be more delighted. Thanks very much to the good folks of Autodesk to sponsor my series in giving you guys tips on how to animate better with Maya and actually kind of like giving you guys some secrets of the trade as we go through these 10 episodes. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but a few months ago, I put out a video asking you guys to submit your questions so I can answer them here in this season. For the very first episode, we have a question by Eddie, and I think it's a very good question that probably is in the mind of a lot of animators right now. Take it away, Eddie. Hi there, Harvey. My name is Eddie. I'm from Sweden. My question is, how do you re-time, re-space polished animation? You know, when you have all your limbs offset, so you have pretty much keys on every frame, so it looks like mocap, and you get notes on that. And so, let's say you're moving a hand up to the face, and the note said, uh, I want to move that hand a bit faster, and stuff like that, or he's moving to the side too fast, I want it to slow down. How do you address that when you have keys everywhere? I find that really hard. So that's something I really need to learn because I think it's a major flaw of mine. Thank you. Right, so as you can see, editing mocap and retiming things and changing things a little bit can be a bit confusing because there's keys everywhere. Let's jump in the computer and try to explain to you guys how I go about this in the best way possible. Let's get to it. Let's get this season started. Let's do it. As you guys can see, um, I have Mamaya open and I have a piece of mocap that I've been reusing in a lot of videos. Apologies, I need to get something new, something fresh that's coming. But for this piece, this is more than enough to actually explain to you how I go about retiming things. Mocap takes a lot of time to capture and plan and it's very expensive. Normally, Drupal Studio will spend thousands upon thousands of pounds getting the motion capture. So when that motion capture comes back to the studio, it's incredibly precious because you know they have spent hundreds of thousands of pounds. So you don't wanna waste that data. You wanna make the most out of the data. So think about the cleaning up of mocap in that sense of like, you want to enhance, but you don't want to kind of like destroy the data that is there. And it's easy for you to destroy it if you start thinking, I can animate this better than the data that is already there. The mocap is already telling you what you need to do. You just have to enhance it a little bit to make sure that it's a little bit better. So if your director tells you, I need these things a little bit different, here's what you do. Now, this is how the raw mocap in this shot, so this particular shot was set up. So as you can see, and I'm just gonna play a little bit, the guy was like standing still, and then he goes in and moves along. Now, the other actor comes along and says, like, this is not exactly how we captured it in the volume. We need the arms to be a little bit more stiff, a little bit, the uh, hands to be closed, all that stuff. Do the thing, show it to me, and then we can actually go from there. So I'm gonna show you guys a cleanup pass that I did ages ago about on this piece specifically. It looks like this. As you can see, a little bit of animation went on top of it. In order for me to get to this point, the way I did it is that instead of going to the raw mocap here and start messing about with keys, because it's such a big change, I need to make sure that I put a layer on top so then I can actually start, start animating on top of the layer. So when I go to my animation layer here and I, I set it up again, as you can see, for example, if I select the arm, I only have about eight keys, eight or nine keys that I have here in order to get the arms to look a little bit better, in order to have that like motion that is a bit better, right? So it goes from here to here. And basically what I've done is basically get this hand to kind of like have a little bit of something in order to get to this starting point that I want to get the hand to. And then I start. Same thing when it comes to like the elbow. So if you actually grab the elbow here, it's on this layer. It's a little bit messy. I didn't clean it up enough. But as you can see, I can actually start getting the elbow to be a little bit better and more clean as I go through my keys. So for example, there's a pop here. Do I want that pop? Probably not. I want to probably remove that pop to make sure that we actually get a clean motion 
throughout the movement. So that's that, and then go into the movement, which is much better. Now, if you want to actually make sure that the movement is even better, let's say you showed it to your director and he goes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. However, can you polish it a little bit more to make sure that you don't have that like small motion or slow motion and then you have movement. So you can do it here in this layer that you already have. If you have your layer set up, it's all good. You can just add more keys to make sure that the movement is actually st staying still for a little longer. So let's say, you actually want to favor this key here, delete that. So you, let's say like you wanna keep it there for a little longer and then you wanna drop it a little bit more fast as you come through the motion, right? So like something like this. And I wanna delete that key cause it's kinda of like bouncing over there. So there. So maybe you wanna do that or maybe something even more aggressive. So you can continue playing with it, which is fine until you get what your director wants. So if this is more what your director wants, or if he's actually like staying there for a little longer, even longer than that, you can just drag this key, move it about. So now he's actually holding a little longer and then dropping back. Um, yeah, something like that. And then you start moving. So this is kind of like how you start kind of like changing the timing and the motion of the whole animation. Um, when you get it to a good point, you do however need to polish it. If you start adding a lot of keys to your mocap or on top of your mocap, things will start to become a little uh, dirty. And then you start counter animating the motion that is already in the animation. And you don't want that because you're making your work much harder than it needs to be. So what you need to do is when you get to a good point and you also clean up your data here, so nothing looks as dirty as it is here. So things are clean, there's no pops, there's nothing going on here that actually looks you know, weird. So when you clean your, your motion correctly, you're going to merge your layers. So then again, you have keys all over the place. Now this can be confusing at first, but bear with me and you'll see what I mean. So if you actually click merge layers, this will go through the timeline and actually merge both the animation layer that you created on top of the mocap that you did. So now you have motion with edit on top, but the end result is just gonna look like mocap, right? Because if you go anywhere in the body, you will see that there's one key per frame everywhere. So this again looks like the mocap that you just received but it has your edits on top. Everything in the body looks now how you want it to be. But you want to take it further. You want to actually polish it more. This is where you do it here. Because remember, that mocap data is really expensive. Therefore, you don't want to mess it up too much. So if your director, your lead is telling you good times, this actually made it better, you can compress it and then move on to the next step of polishing. Because now you're not really like wasting the data you actually add into data, right? So now when you get to this level here of uh, detail, now you're gonna go in and start kind of like really honing in on your animation skills and, and seeing what you can add to this. So very first thing that you can do is obviously doing a Euler filter here because things are very messy. And then you start looking at what is this hand doing and what is this elbow doing? So if you want to actually want to enhance that hand, what kind of things can you do in order to make things better? There must be stuff around here that you can actually do to make things better. So let me just select the hand again. Right, so you go in through here and then you start seeing like things like this, like a little bit of a wobble right there as it comes through. Remember, like these wobbles are actually intentional sometimes when you actually do the mocap. You have to be very careful when you actually delete these keys because some of those keys actually add to the mocap. They don't really like detract from it. But in this case, I'm pretty sure that if you delete this, we're gonna get a much smoother motion throughout, right? So you actually start doing that kind of stuff. Like you start going through it and seeing what, what else can you delete to actually add to this to make sure that the arcs are better and enhanced. Same thing with the elbow, you would go through here and see what kind of dirt do you have around here that you can start deleting and adding. Um, something else that you can do is kind of like start kind of like making your timing slightly better. So for, for example here, you can start holding 
your arcs a little bit more in order to make sure that it kind of like it has a better timing overall once you get into more advanced kind of like mocap editing and this is once again once you actually hone in on your skills you can start actually deleting quite a lot of keys if you know what you're doing for example i know that this is basically this key here this to here is making my timing very linear see that because here on my graph editor everything looks very linear that's not what I want. I want something interesting happening on that elbow when coming in. So I'll go in and delete the keys that, that I don't need for it to actually make this curve a bit more interesting. So I'll, I'll actually do that. So now I have a key at the top, a key at the bottom, and I know that I want to get there faster. And I know that perhaps I want to kind of like hold that key for a little longer and then make sure that that elbow goes through faster. So you get that, right? That is much better. Now, uh, to me, it feels like he's like getting stuck there. See that? Like goes goes in and and just gets stuck there. That's because there's no like overshoot uh, to the action. So you want to maybe like get a little bit of this going on. So like it goes in and there's a little bit of bounce going through. And on the way out, you want to be maybe open it up and then get get to this point a, a little faster. So that's a little bit better. I'll probably have to add, add another key somewhere here in order to get that bounce that I'm looking for. Adding a key there, going back to this stuff. Too aggressive. Yeah, that's the bounce that I'm looking for. See that? Boing. So it's much better overall. Um, and this is just one axis. Obviously, you have to go through them all. When you actually get the keys that you need, you need to start thinking about cleaning up your graph. So at some point here, I think it's much better that if you put another key somewhere there, so you have some like favoring of one key or the other because uh, by favoring one key or the other you normally have interesting timing it doesn't apply to everything but on edits on mocap edits specifically you want to make sure that you have something that actually makes it a little bit more because you're enhancing the motion you're not just keeping it as is that's basically what you need let me just move this a little bit behind because i feel like maybe it's a little bit too fast yeah that's better so that still feels like it's something that is mocap. The timing is like similar to the mocap, but it's enhanced and it's something that it wasn't there before and now it is. So that is how I would go about editing mocap and changing keys and adding information that was not there before and now there is. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget that this season it's all about you guys asking me questions and me answering them here in the computer so make sure to actually kind of like send your questions uh, i'll link below where you can send the questions and also make sure to check this video here somewhere <laughs> where i actually break down how you guys should send your questions by basically stating your name uh, where you're from what kind of questions do you have and basically signing out very very simple only for me to get to know you guys and also give you guys some shine just like I did Eddie early in the video. I hope this is useful and as always stay well, stay safe, peace!